Hello and welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. Today we hear the inspiring story of one Jordan School District educator who says her passion for teaching has actually grown during these unprecedented times. Ray Boren is an American Sign Language teacher at Copper Hills High School, and she was recently recognized as an Outstanding Educator of the Year for Jordan School District. We'll visit her ASL virtual classroom, but first, let's hear from Ray Boren, someone whose enthusiasm for the job during distance learning is keeping students engaged and finding success. Ray, thanks for coming on the Supercast. Oh my goodness, Superintendent Godfrey, I am, I am honored to be here with you today. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Well, it's my pleasure to have you today. Uh, Ray is one of the teachers who was honored by the Jordan Education Foundation. We did that by Zoom meetings, and she's one of our very few teachers of the year. And um, it's really exciting to get to talk with you. Our Zoom meeting was so fun you had all kinds of fans on that Zoom meeting. <laughs> Faculty members, students, they love you at Copper Hills, that's for sure. Well, I, I, uh, I feel very blessed. I've surrounded myself with really good people, um, and I, I, I feel very blessed to be there. I've been there my entire duration that I've been teaching, and it really is um, a home for me there. I have my own little... My own little corner, my own little home, and and like I said, I I've, I've I'm surrounded by amazing grizzlies there. Being surrounded by good people is the only way I survive. <laughs> it's the only way to fly. So um, tell us about your role at Copper Hills. You've been there. What? How, how long have you taught there? You've taught there your whole career. I have. Yeah, this is my twentieth year at Copper Hills High School, and I have done a few different positions over the years, but I have consistently been the American Sign Language, one of the American Sign Language teachers there, and um, I'm a part of the World Language Department there, and, and this year I actually took on a new role. I also have had the opportunity to mentor our new first year teachers this year, and that has helped me grow immensely as well, to having the opportunity to work with, with our teachers coming right fresh um, out of college and, and into the teaching field. So that's been a, a new position for me this year. What, what have you learned working with our newest teachers? In working with our new teachers, I, I get to see, first off, they come in with such passion and with such desire. They're, they're ready to just delve in. They're ready to make, it, make their impact, make a mark. Um, and I love seeing their their just their their enthusiasm to um, be open to feedback I think sometimes as we progress we get a little bit more like well I know what I'm doing or I've got this down and I love that our new teachers are just so um, open to feedback and open to collaborating um, and that's and that helps me as an educator just to see their openness and that mindset um, and being able to collaborate with people at, with different content areas, I think you can always come away with new strategies, and it's it's been phenomenal working with them. That's exciting. You 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 put off a lot of energy and passion yourself, and so I'm sure that uh, you're a great match with all those new teachers. Tell <laughs> tell me what is it that makes you so passionate about teaching? I you know what I think I finally have narrowed it down that I love to see growth. That is like, that's that what that just, it, it, it fulfills me in a way that a lot of other things don't. And so seeing growth in my students, seeing growth in my new teachers, seeing growth in myself, um, because as an educator, you have the opportunity to continually grow. And this pandemic has most assuredly provided that opportunity and so i i think it's it's that that growth that that just i think fuels me you're you've really hit it on the head it is so exciting when you see the growth in the people that you're working with and the students that you're teaching and when you feel it in yourself as you interact with the people around you 
And uh, I think that's a very good description of what makes teaching so great. Now, you talked about how much more we're learning as a result of the pandemic and having the soft closure. I don't think there's much that's soft about it. It's been, <laughs> it's been pretty hard and it's been, uh, a lot of work, I know, uh, that teachers have had to do and, and parents and students. What have you learned through that and, and how are you adapting? It has been an incredible time for adaptation and creativity. I think I used to be very, um, my class was very interactive and they interact with the language and I'd observe them while they're interacting or I'm up there using the language and they're watching me or just, it was so, so, so interactive. And so to have to go to this online format and to creatively problem solve, how are we still going to be interactive? To develop language skills, you have to interact. Right. And so um, I think creatively finding ways to have discussions in Canvas and to do the live tutoring. So it's, it's yeah, just being creative with um, using Canvas, new technologies, using Screencastify, um, figuring out how can I still connect with these kids how can I help them feel like I am I am here I know I'm not in the room with you but I'm here and that I think is something that I've really um, have tried to do because I know that it is it has been a time of crisis for everybody in so many ways you know and it, it impacts everybody differently and my high school kids I know I have some that are are watching their siblings as their parents are both trying to work from home like trying to manage that I I can't imagine I think that, that they are managing some heavy heavy loads and so um, I think my principal has said please teachers just keep assuming positive intent Please show them the, the flexibility and accommodations that, that you would like shown to you. And so I think that that's always a good measure for us, right? Is how would I want it to, how would I want to be treated in this situation? How, you know, we know our own story. We know our own, oh, this is hard or this is my roadblock. But we don't always know everybody else's backstory and where they are. And so I think just that has been a big part of my going to online too is just remembering i don't know what their household looks like right now i don't know what they're encountering in the roadblocks and the setbacks but just trying to help them still feel that that there is somebody who cares for them i think it's been a it's been something that i've tried i've tried to do well i have no doubt that your students know how much you care about them that much is obvious. And you state very well that what we need more than anything is just empathy and connection. We need to understand that everyone is having a different experience through this. And there's no way of really knowing that. And we're all going through the same thing, but we're all experiencing something different based on our circumstances. And um, I'm just really glad that our students have you to connect with. Oh, thank you, Superintendent. And I'm, I, I can assure you, like I said, I know who I work with. And um, there are so many amazing educators out there that I know are, are doing their very best to find ways to connect and, um, and just still help these kids feel like there is learning going on. I think that that's important as well. Because we know when someone learns, their confidence increases. And it gives yeah. them that, it helps them with that resiliency piece too. So that they feel like, I'm resilient. I'm getting through this. I'm learning. I just, I just submitted a really great short story for ASL. Like that's just going to help them feel like, okay, now I can move on to my math. Or now I can move on to my science. And we grow line up online. Yeah. No, I, I, I think you say that very well. It's, and there's a momentum that comes from learning. You learn, you gain confidence. The next thing becomes easier to learn because you believe that you can learn it because you learn the last thing. And, exactly. and, and it just keeps, it just keeps growing in that relationship you have with students builds because 
their confidence is connected to their experiences with you. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we, we all do that as humans. We look back, we'll have, you know, certain mile markers in our life where we look back and we're like, oh, I did this. I ran that marathon or I, I got through, you know, statistics or whatever it is. And you, you can always go back to that and think that was so hard for me. But I know because of that, that I can do those hard things. And so I do, I think you're right. It, it builds for us and it helps us see, I, I can keep thriving, I can, I can overcome. And you forget to look back and give ourselves credit for how far we've come. And I'll bet your first year teachers, when they get to the spring, you know, you could say, remember when you had trouble even doing this and look how far you've come. Isn't um, that so true? One of the compliments that I heard about you is the low turnover right now at Copper Hills because you work with so many teachers so closely. They all want to stay. That doesn't, that doesn't surprise me a bit. I cannot. I cannot take credit for that. I mean, there's well, just no. There's so I, many good people that are. Yeah, that's well, very kind of you. But I know you're at the heart of that, and and that's that's a wonderful thing. I I love the way you describe a teacher learning right alongside with the students under these circumstances. And I don't think we can underestimate how powerful that is because it puts all of us in the mode of being a learner. And I think when we remember how to be a learner, that makes us an even better teacher, an even better educator, an even better person because we have more empathy for what people are trying to accomplish. Absolutely. 100%. Right. When we're in that learning mode, I think we are more compassionate. And um, I think that through this pandemic, because we were all just sort of put in this crisis moment together, um, I think I've noticed that people are just so appreciative of effort as well, that even my students, even though I might have, you know, put something in Canvas not quite correctly, I'll have a student, you know, maybe shoot me a message and then we're able to work through it. And I just see such an appreciation for effort. And I think yeah. that that has been maybe the bottom line through all of this is, is they can, kids can see that. Hopefully we can see that. Even as we're required to stay apart, having to do that has brought us together and uh, has brought greater focus to the work we do and, and strengthened relationships, so. Yes, and then when we get to see each other again, isn't there oh. just like this, like, <gasps> like you're just so much more appreciative. And it hasn't even, like, I mean, we always go a summer sometimes without seeing some of our colleagues, but I don't know what it is, but it has really renewed, I think, appreciation. Yeah, for just, yeah for seeing people and to having that real interpersonal interaction, I think it's, wow, it's given us a renewed appreciation, yeah. Well well said, I, I, I think we'll, um, it'll be a long time before the appreciation wears off because we've just missed people so much. And by the time we get back in a classroom with, with kids, whenever that is, it'll be the longest time they have been out of a classroom or we have been out of a classroom since anyone started, so. It's, it's, uh, it's a long dry spell to get through, but, uh, but we're making it, like you said. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we hear from Ray Boren's American Sign Language students. How are they doing with distance learning? Stay with us. Do you want to know what's going on in Jordan School District? Get updates on the latest information that could impact you and your child, or just find an uplifting story about the good things happening in schools throughout the district. Check out our website at jordandistrict.org or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Let's connect at Jordan District. Now let's head inside Ray Bourne's ASL classroom and talk to some students. Huge privilege and honor to have you join our class today. It's mostly um, ASL 1 students. And then this morning I had a level three class and there were a couple that said they wanted to join as well because they knew that it could be part of a podcast, could be super fun. So we've got a couple level three kids here. So ASL 1, do you have um, students from all three grades in that class? Sophomores, juniors, and seniors there? Yes. 
Yes, predominantly though, sophomores and juniors. I'm, as uh, Ms. Bourne has told you, I'm the superintendent. I started in July, and this is uh, quite a first year for me. I have had a snow day, an earthquake day, and uh, school closure for a third of the year. So uh, I'm really figuring things out. So um, you sophomores for whom this is your first year of high school, uh, I'm, uh, we're in the same boat. Um, so I, um, I guess I would ask seniors first from ASL 1 or 3, just there, are there any seniors? Um, I'd love to hear from seniors about how you're feeling, the fact that one Friday was your last day uh, of school and Monday you realized you weren't going back. How, how are you feel? How are things going? How are you coping with that? I was just kind of th thinking about that earlier today and it just honestly kind of makes me really sad about not ever being able to go back to high school and like seniors are forced to grow up faster than we'd like to because we thought we still had a couple months left of school and of childhood but who has this much attention the class of 2020 has all the attention on them and i think that's kind of interesting because everyone like feels so bad for us i just think it's i don't know just really interesting thank you kearney who else uh, has some thoughts about being a senior in this in this uh, school closure uh, for me like it didn't feel real until like governor herbert said we weren't going back for the rest of the year like we'd been out for a week or two and it was weird but i i kind of had like the hope that we were going back but then when it happened and governor herbert confirmed that we weren't going back it just like kind of hit like a ton of bricks like it's hard i I'm weird. I do really enjoy school. I like going and seeing my friends and teachers. What you describe is how I felt too when the governor announced that. It's not as if I didn't believe that was a, a distinct possibility and we hadn't been thinking about it. We had. But when he announced it, well, here we go. Things have changed. And what Kearney said about it, you know, going right into out of childhood to adulthood, you missed that milestone that you got to look forward to. This class was live and we had about 50 plus kids on when the governor when the governor made his announcement Kara I believe you are you in here Kara you were the yeah, one I'm here okay you heard the announcement before I did cuz I was facilitating the class and um, she got on and shared that with our class like I said it was a Wednesday it was live here and the chat thread that this Google Meet has that's on the sidebar Oh my goodness! I just just reading those comments was um, was tugging at our heartstrings. Seeing these kids, we we were going through the emotions of it together because we were finding it out in the moment. And it was Kara who's actually here now who shared that with us. Kara, tell us about that. It was my dad who was listening to um, the governor and his meeting and everything. Uh, and he comes out, and all my sisters were just we're just here at the table, and I'm here in the class. Um, we're all enjoying ourselves. My dad comes out and he says, yeah, you guys aren't going back to school. Uh, and I was like, it, it was kind of weird to hear, I guess. Um, and so I'm like, well, I have the opportunity to tell these people. So let's just get this around now. Let's see how they feel about it. Um, it was kind of weird to just hear it in that moment. To be in, on a virtual class when that happened. Um, would have been particularly hard. Any other thoughts about what do you miss about school? I think for me, just to put it simply, it's the structure that it brought. I mean, I'd plan my days, my weeks, my life based around this, like the school schedule and what was going on. And so I think like as soon as that was taken away, I kind of just like didn't know where to go from there. I mean, I feel like I'm all over the place. You never know what time it is, what day it is. But <laughs> I think it all kind of just blurs together. But really, like, as soon as I was taken away, I was like, okay, well, I need to, like, set a schedule because that whole structure was just gone. Like, it was really quick to just, like, go away. But I think, like, as time goes on, I've gotten more used to it. So. Yeah, you make a really good point about the time and the structure. You get used to that routine and that rhythm. That's exactly right. Having a place to be, I feel like. Like, you know, I knew where I was going every day. Like, I know, like, at the beginning of every day, I'd go to Miss Bourne's room and just hang out and chill and, like, 
I don't know. I just really miss like being with people and like being used to, I don't know, like talking to other people and seeing like what's going to happen in their day as well as mine. I miss that too. I really miss that. Yeah. Just seeing you guys and even having our casual, you know, start up every day. And yeah, it's, it's, even though we've tried to do these online classes and we make videos for each other, um, it, it's some of those casual moments that, that we haven't had as frequently, Kaylee. So yeah, I agree. That's a really good way of putting it. It's the casual moments. And I find that with meetings too. Uh, you know, normally there's the meeting after the meeting where you kind of linger after that. Same thing with class, you know, you kind of have those chances to interact and make those connections and you don't, don't get that chance. Like I, I shared this analogy um, of my boys and I, we went hiking a couple weeks ago and we saw a snake and as we see the snake, we could tell it was a harmless snake and went right in front of our path. And we're like, okay, it's harmless. We're just going to keep going. Well, then we go a little further and there's a lady stopped on the trail because guess what she saw and heard? Sound like a sprinkler almost, a rattlesnake. And so we almost at first, because there's a rattlesnake and we thought, oh, we just saw a snake. Is it really a rattlesnake? And then sure enough, we look and it's de definitely a rattlesnake. And that tail is just like, back off, everybody, back off. And so we were just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Okay, we're just gonna, we're gonna wait it out a minute. And there were other hikers that came up and, and they decided to turn around, understandably, right? Everybody handled their journey individually and some opted to turn around and and i'm with two boys that were not going to hear of turning around they were just like no and so we waited for a little while and the snake moved a little bit off the trail and then we were able to get up and some of our views and the that we saw were just stunning and amazing the view of these yellow wildflowers incredible that i wouldn't have had had i hadn't have pushed through that obstacle and so I've thought how it is kind of parallel to this COVID experience, how we have had some major roadblocks. Major. You guys have pushed through some really hard stuff. You've pushed through trying to figure out your own structuring. You've pushed through trying to figure out, okay, I got to, I got to, how, how, where's this online chat thing? And where's this? And how do I submit my canvas videos? And all of these things that you guys pushed through, you pushed through some major roadblocks. And so I hope now, now, like for me as a teacher, as I'm getting some of these final projects turned in, those are my views. Those are my vistas that I'm getting of you guys because you have persevered and you have found ways to, to continue to learn and continue to show growth. I, I just, I think that's phenomenal. I can't say enough about how proud I am of you guys for persevering. Um, I, I, I think you've stated that very well. And uh, I always have to keep one eye on the rattlesnake, but uh, it's really important to remember the vistas. That's a, that's a great way of putting it. How do teachers like Ms. Bourne help you stay connected to learning and feel connected with each other? Well, so what Ms. Bourne does is she has like discussion posts where we have to like post a video of our assigning and then another classmate comments and everything. So we're still able to like see them and watch the video and like comment on their assignments and kind of have a little bit of interaction with them. And Ms. Bourne is very good at like spacing the assignments out so we're not too overwhelmed with everything, where like some other teachers do that, but Ms. Bourne's very good at, at spacing stuff. I love that. So things are structured, but there's enough opportunity for you to express yourself and there's flexibility. Most teachers are online 24 seven and willing to help you. And, um, and you just go at your own pace. And so that's been really nice. Has there, in a way, has there been some extra individual interaction that you haven't been able to have otherwise? Yeah, certainly with like um, teachers and even with yourself, you've learned a lot of things about yourself and you've been able to talk to the teacher personally without all the students around. And Especially just with this class, I feel like it's a lot easier to have interaction because we're calling more and we're doing videos and it's a lot easier to interact with the whole class. 
and interact with just the teacher as well. I really miss being able to meet with students as well. So thank you everyone for all your tremendous efforts. You guys are doing such a great job and Ms. Bourne speaks very highly of you and everything that you've accomplished. And boy, it's, it's been wonderful for me to be with you guys. Stay with us. After the break, Ray Bourne has some advice for parents whose patients may be wearing thin with all this at-home learning. I'm Stephen Hall, Director of Jordan Education Foundation. In today's challenging and uncertain times, it is more important than ever before to support one another. Here at the Jordan Education Foundation, we invite you to join us in making sure children are not going hungry. Your $10 donation to the foundation will help us feed one student for a weekend when food and meals may be very scarce for some. With food and hygiene supplies in the principal's pantries at Jordan School Districts being depleted and in higher demand than ever before, every financial contribution made will help us to keep the pantries filled for students who would otherwise go without. The Jordan Education Foundation exists due to the generosity of people who care about kids. If you would like to donate to help children from going hungry, please visit jordaneducationfoundation.org or contact the foundation at 801-567-8125. Thank you. Together we can make a difference. Tell us, Ray, tell us what advice you would give to parents for getting their students through what you described well as just crisis learning. We're doing our best, great things are happening, but it's a crisis. So what advice do you have for parents to help their kids get through it? Oh, I, you know, I would say it's really important that if, if their student is really struggling, that, um, that there is communication with the teacher as well. So that the teacher just, you know, anytime that we have more knowledge, it gives us more ability to understand, okay, what do I need to do as an educator? How can I better accommodate this student? I want to go back to uh, ASL. Um, it, uh, you talked about growth and the importance of growth and, and how rewarding that is. It must be a little bit different for ASL because it's not as if they've had that throughout their entire time in school. They probably start with you, many of them, that's their first experience with it. So you get to see students start at zero and just take off from there. Oh, you just, you, you hit it on the head, Superintendent Godfrey. Um, I have some kids, their, their three year duration while they're at Copper Hills. And so can you imagine, like you said, they come in not knowing the alphabet, not, you know, maybe knowing please or thank you, or maybe, you know, maybe something prompted them to take the class. But really, they come in with very, very little um, ability to communicate. And then when they leave, they can communicate. They can have full on thriving conversations and what how rewarding is that to be able to see that kind of growth in your kids from year to year and you know two to three years time that is that is something that i have found that is just it, it's priceless it's priceless well i how exciting that kids get three years of your classes back to back <laughs> that uh, uh I, I'm, I'm i'm sure that it's something they'll never forget and it's a skill they can take with them their whole lives. And really, you're about connection, but the whole class is about connection. Um, it's, it's about being able to communicate with others and communicating with others that you may not be able to communicate with as easily otherwise. Mm -hmm. And um, learning the value of that connection. So that's, that's exciting. I can't wait to come actually visit your class. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. Um, but you're spot on. Yeah, a, a world language class is all about connection. That is one of our standards. So yeah, culture connection, building that that yeah, you've got to you've got to have that interactive component in a class that you're learning a language. So it is very interactive, and hopefully connections are are more they're strong in that class as a result. I have no doubt. So tell me, if someone you work with new teachers. You're a passionate teacher yourself. 
what would you say to someone who's thinking about becoming a teacher? If they're thinking about it, I would say get in a classroom, see if you can um, have an experience to guest speak, to have have that teaching moment somehow, experience it. Because I think once you get to help a student understand a concept, there's little like that. Like just to see a see it, some understanding click for a student, there there is there is something that is so intrinsically rewarding um, that I would encourage them. I would say, I know it's the cheesy bumper sticker, right? That says, I teach, I touch lives. I know, I know it's cheesy, but you know what? It's true. It's true. And so I would say, what other field are you going to make a more significant impact? I can't think of another one. It is a field where you can truly um, help kids have a better day. Um, you can you have such a a role that you can impact a student who comes into class putting their head down on their desk. You can tell they've checked out before they've, you've even started your lesson, and you can say, you know what? I'm going to get this kid engaged, and I am going to get them to smile today, and we're going to have some fun. And to be able to have that kind of role in a child's life. It's, 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 yes, do I want them to come away with ASL? And yes, do I want them to hopefully meet a deaf person and have a positive interaction and use it, like you said, throughout their life and be more patient when communicating with people? Yes, wholeheartedly, yes. But more importantly, I want all of my students to feel like they have a place, that they have a corner, that they have an adult who cares about them, that they have a home at Copper Hills, that this is a place where they can thrive and learn. And so as an educator, you have that ability to, to help a person feel that, that they're at the right place at the right time. And it, it, it's powerful. It's influential. I would say you got to do it. Do it. Delve in. Yeah. Great, great advice. Great <laughs> advice. Uh, Ray Boren, it has been so nice talking with you. You are an incredible teacher, a wonderful person, and I'm so grateful we have you at Copper Hills and in Jordan District. Thank you. I I am so grateful to be in Jordan District, so grateful to be at Copper Hills, grateful to have you as our fearless leader, superintendent. Thanks to everyone for joining us on another episode of the Supercast. Stay healthy out there. And remember, education is the most important thing you'll do today. We'll see you out there.